Welcome everyone to Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner, and with me is Anthony, and we are interviewing uh, Angela. This is part three with Angela. And what we got to tell you before we, we continue on is that we do have a show on Friday night and Sunday night that's only on YouTube. And it is the live stream. Friday night we have a guest uh, on the live stream where you can and you can participate in the chat. That's the big upside to it. And then, of course, Sunday we we, we, we tell people's stories. Uh, and Thursday, this is a Thursday edition of uh, Paranormal Roundtable, of course, and we have a guest. And that guest is Angela Shelton. As any of you have been following, um, Angela, this is her third week with us. And uh, she's got a lot to talk about. Uh, but before we do that, Josh Turner at PRTPodcast.com. Uh, that's how you can get a hold of me. Also through Facebook, Messenger, or you can send me a friend request. We are putting the links to the shows so you can um, leave a comment on the Paranormal Roundtable Facebook group. And if you do that, you can win an autographed book from one of many authors. Um, and we have a Patreon. You want to explain the Patreon? Yeah, our Patreon is patreon.com slash PRT podcast. We have uh, five tiers ranging from $10 a month to $50 a month. Uh, whatever tier you sign up for, after the second month of being on that tier, you can send us a message on Patreon with your shirt size, your mailing address. Let us know what tier you uh, you subscribe to. Every tier gets a swag bag, and that swag bag is, is going to include autograph books from, from a variety of different uh, authors. It's going to include a shirt, stickers, PRT key change is just really cool stuff. And uh, the the higher the tier you're on, the bigger your swag bag is going to be. Regardless of whatever tier you're on, you're going to get a lot more than your money's worth back in, in books and merchandise. And it, it's a great way to support us. And, and we want to give you something back to say thank you for doing that. Yeah. So with that being said, uh, let's get right into it with uh, Angela Shelton. Go ahead, Angela. You were, you were saying something about a tall figure. Yes. Um so I was sitting there sharing my breakfast with my, my dog. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I seen this dark figure coming from my neighbor's side, coming across into my yard and still walking across. And I'm thinking to myself, he's whatever that is, is extremely tall because you have to be, I mean, he was from bottom to top tall and walking across. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, he's got to be off the, the deck platform by now when he's still walking to the left. And so I, I called her up and I, and she said, I, I tried to call you at the same time. And I'm like, you know, I was like, well, what's going on? And she said, did you see a black entity walking across your yard or anything? I said, girl, I said, and I was trying this why I'm calling you. I'm like, because I just seen that. And he just kept on going to the left. And I said, and then he was just gone. So then we started seeing it around, like in, in the houses, going from one to the other house. But at this place, you know, uh, we, we were there for several months. We weren't there very long. And because um, we had gotten a better house. <laughs> and so... It, you know, we were both experiencing, you know, things being moved and um, even, you know, like bread, like, you know, I discussed with you before there was, um, I don't know what it is, but the <laughs> a loaf of bread would fly off the shelf and it's just, you know, little things like that, but we weren't there very long. So we didn't have that much that happened to us, but near the last Several, I think I think the last several weeks we were there, I was sitting on the couch and I just glanced into the bathroom, the downstairs bathroom, and the door was open. And I looked in the mirror because something had caught my eye because I literally thought I saw something move in that mirror. And I looked again and here I literally seen my oldest son sitting in one of his classrooms doing a paper at his desk and I'm just staring at this mirror like like you know I mean I'm not on anything I don't drink I don't do anything like that but I'm sitting here staring at this mirror and I said what in 
what? And I'm just watching. And then he got up from the desk and he looked out the window. And then he turned back around and he came like towards the mirror. And he was like looking as if he was looking at something else, but he was looking, I can clearly see him looking straight forward towards me. And then he went back to his desk and sat down and he finished his paper and he took his paper and then he walked off with it. And then I didn't see him at the desk. And then the mirror just went back to normal. I said, what in God? And that's when I jumped on the phone and I, I called the school and I asked him, I said, my son, Nicholas, I said, is he, you can, is he in class? <laughs> you know, is he there? And I'm like, oh yeah, you, he's here. So they, they checked and everything. And oh yeah, he's here. He's fine. I said, okay, I was just making sure he was there and everything was okay. I can only imagine what they thought and what they were thinking. Like, you know, is that mother all right? <laughs> so, you know, and when he came home, he had this paper. He took out this paper and he said, look, mom, and he's wearing the same clothes, of course, that he left in, that I saw him in. And he handed me this paper and he got a good grade on it for doing it. And he said, I had to do that paper while everybody just went outside to go play. I said, you were in the classroom alone? He said, yeah. He said, I had to just finish up my paper and then I, then I was allowed to go out and play with them, you know, in a, at the playground there they had. And he said, he can see the playground right from the windows of that classroom. He said, and I said, I said, and I looked at him and I'm holding that paper and I looked at him and I said, did you get up and look outside from your desk? Did you get up and look out and see the kids playing out the window? He said, how did you know that? How did you know that I got up? How did you know that? I said, you know, just, you're not going to believe me. <laughs> you know, and I didn't, I didn't really say much about it to him. And I said, well, I'm glad you did your paper, you know, so we, I told him to, you know, stick it on the refrigerator, like all the others <laughs> on the refrigerator, and I looked over at their dad, and I said, I got to talk to you. I said, I don't know what this was or why this happened, but I seen it in this mirror. I mean, I don't even know if that's just a thing with other people. I have no clue. I don't know. And I never bothered to ask around, has anybody ever seen anything like this through a mirror before? Or, you know, it was like a vision of seeing him in school. That was the craziest thing. I have one of the craziest things. I just, um, I don't know what to make of that. And, but that was, it shocked him because, you know, he, he was like, yeah, I got up and looked out the window. How did you know that? And I just looked at him and just shook my head like, you know, why would it, you know, what would it matter anyway if I, if I told someone, you know, it just, it, it, it makes you feel like that at times, like when all of this stuff is happening to you and, you know, you get tired of explaining it or just tired of it after a while and you, you're just, you know, you blow it off, like whatever. Yeah, you know, I can imagine it might get pretty exhausting. It does. It does at times. And it's like, um, yeah. <laughs> and being a sensitive also, it's like you you need to recharge. You have to, you know, give it a break or or try to get away from it as best you can somehow to, you know, have some peace at times. And it, you know, but lately here, moving into this place, it's been like a rough road before we got here and with their dad passing away and everything like that. And that house we lived in before their dad passed away was it had things there too. The house, that house we moved into, we were going to get married to buy that house and all of that. But then he was struck with cancer. So that never happened. You know, we couldn't do what we were going to do. And, um, but when we first moved into that house, I was happy that I have my whole big downstairs to myself. It's like a big family room. I have my big bedroom. 
had this huge bathroom with a big bathtub. You know, I was, I was so happy to have this bathtub, <laughs> you know, and I said, great, you know, after the kids are gone, I'm going to take a bath and I'm going to relax finally and peace and quiet, you know. So I'm in this tub. I have everything locked up. The doors, you know, windows, everything, everything's closed, locked up. And I'm in the bathroom with the bathroom door closed. And I'm in a tub and, and then I started seeing this because like in the hallway, I mean, there's no windows, you know, but a little bit of light coming from the foyer, you know, from the light shining in. Then I can see, I started noticing that there was this shadow at the bottom of the door and the bottom of the door had a big gap at the bottom. So, I mean, if people were standing there, you could see either their shoes, you know, going back and forth, but I kept seeing this dark shadow going back and forth and hearing footsteps on carpet. I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself and I had soap in my hair and I, and I said to God, I said, please God, I do not want to die like this. You know, I don't want to, this is not how I want to die. I don't want to die in a bathtub, you know? And so I just laid back real quietly, rinsed, got the soap out of my hair very slowly and try not to make no sounds with water is just impossible. <laughs> so I, I did that. I, then I put my hair up in the, a bun and stood up out of the water very slowly and then stepped onto the floor. And the whole time, I, you know, whatever it was, was still walking in the hallway and I threw my clothes on and then I, I'm looking around like, oh my gosh, there's nothing in this bathroom to protect myself with if there is someone in this house, you know, and I'm looking all around and then my middle son, William, good old William, <laughs> he left a metal, oh, well, he left an aluminum baseball bat in between the sink and the wall where the light switch is by the door and I said oh thank you and I picked that up and I just said there's I have to do this I mean or I'm never going to get out of that bathroom you know and I picked up that bat waiting you know just waiting and ready to swing and I pulled that door open and I looked and I looked to the left and the right and didn't see anything then I realized I had to go and open up all these doors and look in them down there and the laundry room didn't have a door so I'm thinking oh my gosh whoever's here they're in that laundry room <laughs> you know and then I I did I just popping out sweat I was I just went for it and I looked in all the rooms shut the doors behind me then as I was going down towards the steps that lead out to the door and up and also up to the upstairs I had to stop because they're off to the left before you get up them steps is a den where I had my youngest. I made that into like his playroom and I had to check that too, because then there was also a closet right there next to that door. And I, I checked it, nothing. So I took a, a big swallow and a breath and, and then I put my back up against the wall going up those little stairs so I can look up with this base. You know, I have the baseball bat already waiting to swing and looking above and didn't see anyone. And I opened up that door and I ran out that door. And I went across the street to my friend, Bonnie, and I said, she's, she's washing her pickup truck. And I said, I said, I, girl, I said, I need you. <laughs> She's like, what is wrong with you? Why are you so wet? You know, and I said, I told her and she said, there's somebody in there. And I'm like, I think so. I said, and if it's not, I don't know what it is. I said, but whatever it is, it was waiting at that door for me. And she went in, she went in her garage and she's like, wait, so she got something too. And she's like, let's go. And she came over and we're, we went through the whole house, nothing absolutely nothing 
And I said, my bath water was still in the tub. I mean, I didn't even drain it. I didn't want to make a noise to drain the water. I, I didn't know what was going on. So she looked at me. She goes, it looks all clear. We went into every, you know, every nook, cranny, nothing. So I don't know what that was. So I, at that time, I didn't know what that was. But I had a feeling I knew what that could be. And so I didn't tell her anything else, you know, and I went on about my business. And, you know, as time went on, there was some very, very bad things. It, um, this was near Christmas time. And it was our first Christmas there. And I uh, had the whole front room decorated with the tree, blue lights, and had this china cabinet. A um, couple China cabinets, and I had my dolls, and everything was set up, and everything. And this one China cabinet, I had deck, all decked up in lights because it had a, a a mirror in the background, which made it look like it had more lights. So it was really pretty. And I had my Christmas angel doll porcelain sitting on well, up there with other little Christmas dolls, and this one in particular. We were, we turned around and looked at it, me and my youngest, and we're standing in the kitchen and looking into uh, the front room and that doll, like you can't, you couldn't even pose this doll because if you even tried to, it would break and it was old and it didn't have any mechanical things in it or anything like that. But this doll raised its arms up towards my youngest, you know, our out towards us both we're standing there looking at it and my youngest just screams and I held on to him and I'm like okay that you know that did it that doll went into the trash I got rid of all I had like over 300 and some dolls but I had a lot of them boxed up in the garage they all went I, I said either I told their dad I'm like you can sell them at the flea market or whatever you want to do I'm like but don't bring them back <laughs> you just leave them in the, and put it in with the, um, we had a, a rental unit, a small one just for all of the stuff that we would take and sell, flea marketing stuff. And um, I said, you take them all and just, I don't care, five bucks, 25 cents, whatever. Get rid of them. Don't bring them back. <laughs> so he did. And um, so I didn't collect dolls after that anymore. And um, from that, we were camping out in the front room. It was me, my youngest, the, the boys were laying on the floor. My daughter was in her room sleeping and their dad was in his recliner chair. And I'm on the couch with Dominic and he's at the bottom where my feet is. And next thing I know, I turned to my right and then I couldn't move and I knew something bad was in that house. And I just, it just, I was so afraid to move where I couldn't move. And this face appeared to me and it was like, um, it was demonic. It was, uh, it had like this milky gray looking skin, with like black looking veins and, and these sharp teeth. And it looked at me and said, why don't you let me make love to you the way it should be? And I couldn't believe what I heard. You know, I was like, and I said, no. And it said, why not? And I said, no. And then it, it was gone. And I sat up from that and I said, oh, dear God. And I started praying. And then whatever it was did not like me praying at all. And I laid back down after I'm looking around and then I started hearing like these footsteps going up and down from the foyer to the upstairs where I was. And we had uh, six cockatiels in a big cage right in front of the, um, like right before you walk into the front room, it was, the cage was over to the left. And those birds freaked out so bad and they were always doing that. And every time I would hear those footsteps, it would mess with the birds. So I knew what was coming next. You know, it was, you know, wanting to torment the birds. And 
So I calmed them down and I went back in the front room, laid back down. And next thing I know, I felt like this exhausting feeling like that I had to sleep and then I couldn't sleep. And then I felt these hands on my wrists pulling my arms uh, to towards like my left arm was being pulled towards the couch on the back of the couch, like up, up, up on the back of the couch. And I felt something holding my arms, but yet my arms physically were like curled up on my chest. So whatever it was, I don't know that it felt like they were pulling me out and I couldn't eat couldn't even make sense of this and I I was I was so afraid at this point and I didn't know what was going to happen then something grabbed my head and pushed it down and back like my head was stuck looking upward towards the ceiling and whatever it was and then it wouldn't let me go like my arms and then my legs like the bottom of my ankles were being pulled and my arm my right arm was being pulled downward and then I heard this female voice saying, she's yelling and screaming at me. She says, whatever you do, don't say anything. He's coming. To, he's coming. Don't you say anything. Do you hear me? And she's screaming at me. And all I could do was like try to nod my head like, okay, you know, I didn't know what was going on. And I just was hoping that whatever it was, it was going to go. It was just going to leave me alone. And I started saying like the Lord's prayer in my mind and over and over again. And then I felt this, but I don't know what it was, but it was big. And it like literally jumped on my left side down, like um, by my hip bone area. And it, like hit me real hard and then like I tried to yell and I couldn't yell and then I kept saying the Lord's prayer I said dear Jesus you know and then it stopped and I was laying there and I I'm trying to make sense of all of this you know like what in the world is in that house and we got to do something because this is bad I'm laying there and then all of a sudden I started feeling this excruciating pain from my left side, right where it punched me. Like the, I already felt pain there, but it was like stronger and stronger. So I rolled off the couch and I'm trying not to scream because I didn't really want to scare anyone or wake anyone up thinking that it was just going to go away and it, it wouldn't go away. And I put my left arm and pushed on the side that hurt my left side and I just kept my arm there pressure and then I reached over and tried to get their dad and then I I just called him and then he looked over he says what's wrong or he says you know are you all right and I said I don't know I said I can't I said this pain is too bad it's too bad I can't let it go I can't move my arm and I said I need help I said you got to call an ambulance so he he said, you know, I'll take you. So he got the kids ready, you know, and from that moment where he had the kids ready, I don't remember, I don't remember anything from that moment on to getting into the vehicle or even leaving the house or getting into the vehicle, going to the hospital. And I do remember them asking me to move my arm and I said no no because it's going to hurt so bad and that's all I remember I don't remember anything um you know uh coming out of recovery I don't remember going home I don't remember walking back up them steps to get into that house all I do remember is sitting on the couch and from then on that's what I remembered and they asked me later on, you know, like, um, you know, how did this happen? And I said, I, I woke up like that in, in pain. I couldn't, because you can't, you just can't tell people that, you know. You yeah, can't. they're not going to take you seriously. Right, exactly. And I said, you know, how else can you explain it? And I just said, 
I woke up like that and, um, you know, demonic things do attack you. They, they can cause pain. They can make you sick. They can, you know, pick you up, throw you. I mean, all people have had all kinds of experiences with very bad things. And so over all of this, I had, it was a, it was because of a blunt. It was like a blunt hit. They said, they said that, you know, the way the hernia was either picking up something extremely heavy, dropping it, or trying to catch something heavy, or being hit. And it was, I couldn't even, you know, I said, nope, I didn't pick up anything heavy. And what am I supposed to do? So I was like, I don't know how it happened. It just happened. So, you know, get back home and I don't remember any of the surgery part. I don't remember, you know, like getting the surgery. I don't remember the prep that they do or anything. And the only thing I do remember is I'm trying to move my arm. And they said, you know, they had to put uh, a heating pad on my arm because my arm was so on there for so long that my arm was stiff. So overall in this house, after I healed up, their dad took us out to go pick up, you know, some Chinese food. Cause I said, I, I just want to get the food and just go back home. You know, I don't feel like sitting in the restaurant or anything with kids at the, <laughs> cause I was still trying to finish healing. You know, I wasn't that bad at the time because I just had a bit more healing to do. And I just didn't feel like being in a restaurant. And so we go, we pick up the food and before we left, I put a Bible up on the TV, like the entertainment system. And I put this plaque of Jesus that I'd gotten from a free box. And I saw this nice wooden plaque of him. And I put that up there too with the Bible. So we leave. Everything's locked up. And it it was a cold, cold night and everything. And we're in a cul-de-sac, you know, and my friend Bonnie, she'll, you know, she's always in the window and I'll wave for her and she'll keep an eye on things like in the neighborhood, like in our cul-de-sac when she's sitting by our window. And um, we were only gone for like 20 some minutes, whatever, just enough to pick up our food and come back. And we come back in and the Bible was like in the kitchen with shredded, shredded up, clawed up pages from the Bible on the floor. And I said, what in the world? And I stopped because I was thinking somebody must be in that house, you know, you know, who's in it. And everything was locked up. Their dad checked everywhere. And it was, it, the kids even checked. It was all locked. And I'm like, you know, we're the only ones that has keys to this place. Cause it was all new locks, you know, what's going on. So, um, then we looked and then the, the, um, the plaque of Jesus was in the kitchen. And I had like, like partially from the front room into the kitchen. So I picked it up and I went to look at it and it had three thick gouges, claw marks right down the whole entire plaque. And I just looked at it. I dusted it off and I stuck it up back up on the entertainment system. And I picked up the Bible, put the pages that were out of it. And then we picked the other parts up and threw that out. And I just sat the Bible back up on the entertainment system and it, my kids were freaked out about it. They're like, what in the world is going on? And I'm like, I'm like nothing. I said, hey, everything's fine. You know? So I just put it all back up and we ate our food and, and everybody camped out again in the front room. And the, with that all happening and then, you know, their dad, with the cancer being sick and he passed away in the house too. And, and right before we were leaving that house, the guy next door, he is not right. 
and the girl he was with too. And he said, I asked him, I, he was outside doing something with the car. And I said, um, I said, how long have you lived here? He says, quite a, you know, quite a while. I said, really? I'm like, well, I'm like, have you heard anything about that house right there? Like, did anybody ever say anything about something being in that house or creepy, anything? He said, oh, no. He said, he said, well, we used to go in the back of it the whole time it was, you know, left empty that they would do Satan worshiping stuff in the back in the family room down there. And he said that, you know, they did rituals and stuff like that in there. And I looked at him. I said, you did what? Oh, I wanted to shake this guy. You know, I, I, was, I just looked at him and I, I'm, I'm looking at him like, you know, he, they're the cause. You know, they, with this evil, they are the cause. And I just, I left everything in that house except for the clothes on my back. And I took what the boys wanted with their electronics and all that. But I left everything else and took only a little bit of stuff, put it in a tiny little storage. And then I let that go. I'm like, I, I don't, you know, really didn't want anything to do with that place after that. And I was like, you know, maybe their dad wouldn't have been sickened into the craziest thing also from their dad getting carcinoma cancer. It started you know, with the kidneys and then went to the lungs and all of that. Well, my friend Bonnie and her husband, because we used to go over and talk with them and they would come over too and turn around after we moved out of there, her husband come up with the same cancer, carcinoma cancer in the kidneys and went to his lungs. He died the same way that my boys' dad died. And I, I just felt so horrible for her and she was going to help me with the cost of the cremation or burial. She was going to you know, put half and I was going to put half to it. And then it came down to where, because we weren't married, that his, his first wife's kids had the oversay of his body. And they were really nasty towards us too. We, you know, I never had anything with them, you know, like hateful or anything. And then they just started being hateful towards the end. So they wanted money for his burial and everything. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't have it. I, Cause I didn't. <laughs> and I was like, so they, uh, have his ashes and everything, but um, it was that house. I would not recommend anyone to be in it. It is very, very bad, and it probably would have gotten worse if we would have stayed. So um, we left there and went, made a pit stop to my mom's house in Baltimore, and from there was a little rough, but we managed to get here, and we've been here for eight years and dealt with a whole lot here that it's crazy. So, you know, people come and go through these apartment complexes and, and the old ones, you know, you don't know who's been in here and did what. And so was, we were told once all of this stuff started happening with us here in Aberdeen. So I honestly didn't even know who to turn to. I didn't know what to do, especially when after he was hearing his name being called, you know, through his pillow, he was hearing it, you know, coming back to me, telling me that, you know, something's bothering him. And so we camped out in my room and then stuff started ha happening to me while I'm laying in bed, just holding his hand while he's laying on the floor with his blankets and stuff and camping out in my room. And he fell asleep. And next thing I know, Something kicks my bed, slides up the side of my bed, stands in front of me where I can't see it, but I can feel it in front of me. You know, like as if your eyes are closed and someone is actually standing in front of you. That's what that was like. And and I'm thinking to myself, uh, you know, he's telling the truth. There is something really going on here because I've never once told the boys that the first day I was alone in here. After we moved here and they were in school, I had them all in school, that there was a 
tall male figure wearing a black, like I've never seen black so black, like this robe that it was wearing. And it was coming out of the kitchen area. And I went to turn around and I had a a bed in the a bed in the bag, you know, to make their their air mattresses up, their beds. And I turned around and this thing, I almost walked right into it. And I stepped back, I stopped myself and and I looked and watched it and it came out of, you know, out of the kitchen, turned and like was going slow, like moving slow and it went down the hallway into their room and turned to the right. And I followed it. And when I turned my head into the right, I didn't see it, but I could feel that it was still there. And I turned around and I'm th- I said to myself, you know, like, please, God, let it just keep on going, you know. And I dropped the bed in the bag in here and I just went outside and waited for my youngest to walk up from school, from his elementary school. And um, from there, like I didn't tell him anything and then that's when it started with him calling his name over and over and over wouldn't let him sleep and he and I just said you know you camp out in my room you know what I'm thinking not again you know here we go and then it just escalated with him where it would tell him horrible things like it's going, it wants to kill him. It wants to um, kill us all. It wants to separate him and from us. And then we all started having these nightmares, all of the same kind of scenario where we see each other with these deep, dark black eyes and everything. And we were all having these terrible nightmares like that and what it was doing is I think it was trying to separate us all from each other like thinking that each one of us are are bad you know and it was it was working you know doing its thing and I said "Uh -uh." so from that we were getting stab pains we were getting um, stabbing pains in our feet our hands our forehead our back, arms, and I had it in my leg, like like my knee, by my knee. And I'm like, what in the world is this? You know, and then all of us are, you know, experiencing the same things, um, seeing the same shadowy things, hearing the same breathing in our ears, and it would do it deliberately. It would co- go around to everybody in the room and do that. It'll breathe, like, heavily horrible in our ear and I'm like this is you know whatever it is then I would get up and I would tell it to leave I would just lose my patience with it and just tell it to get out you know in the name of Jesus Christ get out so we wouldn't hear from it for a few days and then it'll be back again you know doing the same thing so one night not long after we moved in here and it was, the, it was, I guess it was near, near Halloween, whatever, close to Halloween. Then we heard the same thing that I heard at my mom and dad's house where it sounded like something was being thrown in every part of this place on the windows, the ceiling, the walls, the floor, like all around us. It sounded like something was hitting into every part of this place and yet we couldn't see anything so that was to me that was another sign that something bad doesn't you know either one is here or it followed us here or something bad is here you know so um we dealt with that the boys you know we all went out and looked there was nothing no rocks no nothing nothing on the balcony Nothing at all. And so we couldn't make out hedge or tails with that. So we just left that alone. I didn't make a big, big deal out of it. I didn't want to keep freaking them out or have them being scared. So turned around to where it just kept on picking on my youngest and calling his name, touching him, you know, just picking at him, telling him things, 
you know, um, showing him things. It was, it was crazy. There was a rock that kept tapping on his window, which I thought he was doing the tapping because he was the only one awake in that room. And I was awake in my room and I, and I called in there. I'm like, Dominic. And he come and he says, mom, he said, that's not me tapping. It's a rock on the outside of the window, tapping on the window. I said, what? Sure enough. When I walked in that room, I saw this stone as it was tapping and it just stopped. And then it, it was gone. Like it, like it just dropped, but the stone wasn't outside at all. And I'm like, what was that? You know, it's just something that just kept tormenting him. So then a few days later after that, like it was, it was uh, like cold outside, but not cold enough for snow or anything. Then these ice sickles started forming on the window in that back bedroom on the outside. It just started forming these ice sickles right in front of our eyes. And I took pictures of that. So I was like, huh. I'm like, do you see it? We're like watching it. It was, it was amazing, but it was creepy. And all at the same time, you know, you're like, what is doing that? And nowhere else on any other windows, nothing just in that one little spot on that window. And I just shook my head and I'm like, well, we can't wipe them off because they're on the outside, you know? So we just left that alone. And then one night he went to bed, his, his older brother is usually the one that will bring him to me when anything ever happens, you know, paranormal. It's like his brother is the overseer of him and his brother. and here he couldn't be with us one weekend because he went with his biological dad and to go see his grandmother in the hospital for you know, the weekend so it was just me and the two younger boys and he was laying down and everything and well I came out I went in my room first and I came out and we met each other like in the hallway passing through back back and forth from the bathroom and stuff and he said that something is in there, you know, messing with him again. And so I gave him this glow in a dark cross that I had and I handed it to him. And I said, here, I said, I said, you know, we'll say the Lord's prayer and everything. So we did. And we prayed and my middle son was a sound to sleep. He was out, he was asleep snoring. And so I said, you're going to be okay now, you know, make, you know, get Jesus and and everything, you're going to be fine because nothing can hurt you, you know? As soon as I went to take a foot right outside that door, and my other son, my middle son, William, he was slapped on the back of his neck because he jumped up holding the back of his neck and he's, tr he's like opening his eyes and, he, you know, because he just was woken up out of a sound sleep and he's holding the back of his neck and he says, Mom, he said, something just slapped me. And then I thought to myself, obviously something can hurt you, you know, and, but I already knew that anyway, from the experience that I had with that hernia thing. And so I just, I said, okay, so I went and I got holy water in the squirt bottle. I got the olive oil, stuff like that, you know, went around the room like a religious crazy person, you know, but praying and everything, doing the right thing. And so I, I left the room, they were asleep and there was nothing in the way of the floor because we moved in here with absolutely nothing. And then I went to the store and just bought air mattresses and the bedding and all of that stuff. So we had nothing but two little tiny totes in their big closet. And that was it. So I, I go to lay back down. I left the light on in that back bedroom for them. And no sooner I got in bed and it was like, you know, 15, 20 minutes or so went past and I'm laying there, laying on my side and I'm looking towards out my bedroom window. And the next thing I know, I hear like this loud bang. 
And I said, what in the world was that? I mean, it wasn't like something fell and hit the floor, but it was a loud bang. And it was, I can't even explain it. And I thought maybe somebody downstairs, you know, that was under us at the time that blew up something. I didn't know what to think, but I jumped up and I couldn't even open up my door fast enough. And he, uh, it sounded like my youngest was climbing over boxes and boxes and papers and trying to get out of that room, but the door was open and there was nothing in the way of him. So he come barreling through my door and his eyes were open and he was just so petrified of every movement that I did in my room that caused a shadow. And he backed up and he was like, and I'm like, whoa, I'm like, what happened? I'm like, are you all right? What happened? And he's, he is so freaked out at this point to where he, it was like, I mean, I didn't know what to do for him. And the only thing I could do was kind of like tackle him. And I'm like, okay, I got you. I got you. Let's just sit down on the floor together. So we did. And I held on to him and I wrapped my feet around his feet. And I said, we sat like that for hours until the sun came up and everything. And it was like about 10 o'clock before he started getting up and moving around. And then I did like six video clips of him explaining to me what he saw um, and stuff like that. And this thing attacked him and it, he said it looked like a, like a wolf, like a, like some type of wolf type animal, like a wolf man, you know, he, he couldn't even, I can't, it just makes me really chilled to talk about this. Like the hairs on my arms are standing up. Um, he's explaining the eyes of this thing, the, the fur on it, that, you know, what it looked like and everything. And I, I asked him, you know, what did it do? What did it say? You know, it, it, it was attacking him and he tried to get away from it. And I'm like, well, did you, like, what was in the way of the door? You know, he, he couldn't even explain it. And it was, it was just so shocking. Well, I got on my phone and I'm holding him with my right arm. And I'm flipping through my phone, like surfing the web of anything like paranormal. And just, then I came across this VIPS like vipes or vips, whatever it was called, and uh, got a hold of a guy. He was from Texas, and he told me that he would get a hold of some groups for me that would come out here to check it out. Well, he sent me three, but only two actually came out here. And um, the first one, she was a teacher that used to be a teacher right down the street where my son went to school at the elementary school. So that was, that was kind of comforting because you can't go to the school and tell them things, you know, but she believes in all of that. And so she came with her team and they did a, um, like an echo box thing. And, um, I didn't tell them any, nobody knew much about my grandmother or anything. And here, you know, she asked it, you know, what is here bothering Dominic? And it kept coming across dog man, dog person. And she asked it again, it came back dog person. And then, you know, she said, um, is there anyone here that's protecting this family? And it came out and it kept saying, need to eat fall, pass out, need to eat. And see, I wasn't eating and I was, you know, going, still going through like some anxiety things and stuff like that from being in Baltimore. And I was just trying to, you know, sort everything out. And I wasn't really eating. I was feeding my kids, but I wasn't eating myself. And she said, who here isn't eating? And the boys pointed at me and I didn't think they actually realized it. And she said, 
she goes, you need to eat. And I'm like, and that sounded so familiar to me of what was being said across the, the box, you know, and she said, who's here protecting the family? And it said, grandma, grandma Shelton. And that's my grandmother. And she always would say to me, honey, you better eat or you're going to pass out and bump your head. And so when I heard that, I'm like, wow, you know, but how can I be so sure that that is actually my grandmother? But that's what she would say. And you couldn't leave her house without her making you food. She would, (laughs) that's her, you know, the Southern heart of her she would always make food for people coming in and going you know when you come in you eat before you leave you eat or take it with you so that's how she was and I just giggled at that because that's what she would tell me honey you better eat or you're gonna pass out and bump your head (laughs) so it was just you know weird and because she had just passed away a year before And I didn't tell anyone, you know, I didn't really discuss it with my kids or anything and they didn't know. And I certainly didn't think that she would or even appear to be here or anything. So that happened. And, you know, saying that the dog, the dog person, um, my son had a lot of these like out of body things and these, this thing here would show him things um the dog man would show him things yeah yep it whatever this was it it clearly wasn't good and it it showed itself to be what he was seeing it was and not only did we validate each other's claims here well you know but i told uh, my youngest i'm like don't tell your brothers, anything that you see, because if they come to us telling us what they're seeing, then that is validation, you know? So don't, don't say anything. It's not like the boys will actually lie about it anyway, because they, they take this stuff seriously and, you know, they don't play with any of this and yet, you know, they get bothered by it. And so they did, we were sitting all here one night, watching a movie, a new movie together. I would always get them, you know, some, their their new movies that would come out for them. And we sit here and watch them. And as we were sitting here, I had the light on that was, you know, near me and the TV was on. So it was only a little lamp that I had on and it was, it didn't lit in here. So my son was sitting on a love seat that was facing towards the kitchen and the uh, hallway and I looked over at him because I can feel everything that he, you know he picks up also and I knew something had just stepped in here and I looked right at him because I knew it was it was aiming at him and I looked right at him at the same time he looked over at me and he looked up back over towards the hallway and something was coming at him and he got up and he ran and dove like right behind my back. And I said, it's okay. It's okay. He says, mom, get it away from me. You know, get it away from me. I can still see it with my eyes closed. He could still see this thing that was coming at him with his eyes closed. It was making him see it, you know, every time he was Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I put my leg out and I, put my back up against him good. And I said, okay, I said, I want you to breathe. You know, just, I said, just look at me. Do not look over there at it. Whatever it is, you look at me. I said, because nothing, I'm not going to let anything happen to you and nothing is going to do anything to you. And so he could still see it. Like he just glanced over and I said, don't look at it. He says, you know, it's still there. You know, he says, when I close my eyes, I can still see it. And I'm like, look at me. I'm like, okay, breathe. And I said, tell me what it looks like. He described it as being some type of reptilian looking face and features of like a, it had arms, legs, you know, a tail like, and just, he, he freaked out. And right before all of that, I had a picture 
of something that looked just like that in a picture with me that I took a selfie in my room one day playing, you know, just trying to adjust my camera on my phone. And that I got, I didn't even see it at first until after I posted it. And a friend of mine said, what in the hell is that sitting next to you, looking right up at you? I said, there's nothing next to me. I'm like, you're crazy. You know, he says, he says, I'm going to tell you, you need to take a look at that again. And so he circled it and sent it to me. And I'm like, and I said, what in the hell? (laughs) You know? And I said, no, wait. And so I, I did, I took it and looked at it. I took it down. I took it off Facebook and I said, what in the crap is, you know, what is that? So when he told me reptilian, I waited a couple of days and I, for him to get over it, I guess, or hopefully it wouldn't show back up here again. And I showed him pictures with that picture in the mix. And I said, Hey, come look at these pictures with me. I didn't tell him anything about what, you know, wasn't a picture with me at all. He's flipping through the pictures and he come back to that one and he's looking at it. And I'm looking at him and he said that, he said, you have that in your picture. You know, that's what I saw. I'm like, are you sure this is what you saw? It looks like this. He said, yes. So, yep, I have a picture of something that looks reptilian with skin lines. You can, you know, like a, like a reptilian skin would look like, Mm -hmm. you know, I have never seen anything like it. And I'm, I don't know, I'm not no pro at no, you know, fixing any kind of pictures up or anything. Cause I only had a cell, a, it was a, um, a smartphone <laughs> at the time when I took that picture and <clears throat> I didn't have anything else, you know, just, just me in my room sitting on my arm mattress and took that picture. When you live a life, like it's all paranormal and it, mine is. And it starts out, you know, especially when your mom is calling you to go in the house and you have to wait for several other people in front of you that you can't, that, well, she couldn't see and I could see them. And she's like, are you coming? I'm like, after they do, you know? And I'm like, well, you know, I was mad because sometimes she couldn't see these things, but then, you know, You know, I'm standing on a corner with my granddad, too, so that's another story. I'll probably just um, (laughs) tell you on the next one. But um, Yeah, we can definitely do some more. You got a lot. I got to run, but it was awesome. Like, I didn't even have to do much work. You just did all the talking. So, you know, that's always a blessing right there. But uh, for sure, definitely want to get back with you. I'm a very busy guy, and so it's kind of hard to get things because I have a lot to do. But for sure, I'd like to, you know, somewhere between the the vampire book and the UAP book, I'm going to write my first ghost book, probably first of many, because I had a haunted house experience. If you go to the show, Paranormal Roundtable, you listen to the first, like, few episodes, they're about a house that, that I lived in. And I interviewed, like, six different people that lived there with us at one time or another. And oh, wow. it, it is a lot to take in because a lot happened there, you know. And, um, yeah. So you, you, you'll get a little perspective. Like this is old hat to me, man. Barton Nunley, another author, friend of mine. He, he, he's another one who's, you know, lived in a haunted house and has a lot of stuff to talk about on, on you know, on what happened to him. But, uh, for sure, definitely we'll get, we'll, we'll be in touch. So let's plan for Friday because I definitely need you to come back and we got to finish up the stuff that happened to you. But for now, I got to run. So folks, uh, okay. thank you for tuning in. To Paranormal Roundtable with Angela Shelton. You can catch her. We're probably going to have her on the live stream to talk about some of this stuff. And, and as of this, as of this uh, playing this episode here, this premiere, uh, she will have probably already talked about it on the live stream. So go back and listen. Uh, kind of weird. We're going to do it in reverse. We're recording this before she goes on the live stream. But by the time you hear this, she will have already been on the live stream. <laughs> so that's probably what's going to happen. But So, folks, thank you for tuning in. And uh, from everybody here at Paranormal Roundtable, me, Anthony, good night. Good night.